I'm here with my good friend Akiva Silver of Twisted Tree Farm down here in Spencer, New York. He's a, a grafting magician. He's done thousands and thousands of trees. And today he's going to share his whole process for how he does whip and tongue grafting. And specifically, you're doing apples today, right? Yep. Cool. So stick with us. Let's get into it. Um, so I'm um, just putting some trees together. These are my rootstocks. They're uh, a clonal rootstock, Bud 118. And uh, so I just have them in this bag so they don't dry out in the room. Um, but you can see it was a rooted, a rooted uh, stem. So this was where it was cut out of the stool bed. And uh, there was a, a root, there's a root system that's still in the ground below that. And they were clipped off. Um, basically while they were growing out of the stool bed as they're growing throughout the season sawdust is mounted over and then they root into the sawdust um, so you have like a nice root stock that uh, has known qualities it's not a seedling root stock and then uh, these are my scions or uh, they're just cuttings from a, a tree these are John Gold um, and I'm just putting the two together joining stock and scion it's a really old old skill that people have been doing for a long time. Um, this is my knife. If you use, if you're gonna graft, you need a very, very sharp knife. Um, this is a, a budding knife, so it's it's beveled on, on two sides, and uh, it's wicked sharp. You want to be scared of your knife. If you don't feel like you might cut yourself, then it's definitely not sharp enough. And I take precautions, so I always put a lot of duct tape on my thumb of my knife hand, and then I wear a a chef's glove or knife glove um, and with with the glove and the tape I feel very really safe I've grafted thousands of trees and not cut myself with this uh, setup but before that I used to cut myself enough that it sucked um, so my favorite way of joining stock on cyan is uh, the whip and tongue and I like it because it's structurally really strong and it provides a lot of contact between the two um so what you're going for when you graft is so now i've made a cut and whenever you cut a tree it's going to now heal from that cut and when it heals it swells it'll make this callus tissue all around the edges of the cut and when it swells that callus tissue is very sensitive while it's forming and so i'll make a corresponding cut on the scion and when the two each are forming their callus tissue, it's so sensitive that they'll merge and fuse into one. And that's that's the basics of how grafting works. So the first cut, I did it pretty quick. I'll do a couple more. Um, it needs to be a very decisive cut. What I'm going for is one plane of wood. I don't want like a bunch of lumps and ridges, so I'm not like kind of like carving and whittling. It's just a slash, so I have a nice plane of wood. And then I'm gonna make the tongue. And so when I make the tongue, I put my my thumbs are actually pressed against each other and I want the cut to be like it's gonna start about here and it's gonna go down to about halfway and so it's just a little a little notch and then the cyan will they'll lock into it it'll make sense when I do it but when I do it I, it's a lot of pressure and I'm not pushing straight down I'm actually pulling the knife through so the motion is actually like this it's just a little thing i'm not just going like that if i went like that i'd probably just split the rootstock and maybe really hurt myself so i'm just pulling it through pulling it through and then i'm gonna do the exact same thing on my scion this one's a little thick but i think it'll work um actually i don't really like it let's pick another cutting this one's skinny you don't have to be too picky but sometimes when you're on film <laughs> you're a little more nervous um anyway here's my cutting and uh all this stuff is just dormant. It's been stored in my basement. Um, and then when I make my whip, I didn't really show this the first time, but I'm not like carving. You get a much better cut. I put I put everything together and then I'm pulling through. I use my whole um, upper body, like my, I'm not using my wrist. My wrist is locked. And then I just like open up my chest and pull my elbows back. Um, and then you can got to go between buds. If I like make the cut like here and go through, it'll be weird. The buds are make things crooked. So on this one, I'm going to go from this right where this bud is to the end. Um, the next spot I could cut would be between these two buds. So I'm always going between buds. 
Um, so I get it like right up there and then just like that, a nice cut. Um, it takes a lot of practice. It looks really easy and it is once you get it. And then I'm gonna make my little tongue again. You made tons and tons of practice cuts before you started grafting, right? Yeah, I feel like um, before I would put trees together, I would practice with sticks. Um, oh, that one wasn't very good. I slipped, but um, I'll do another one that'll be better. Um, but this will still heal. The bark just got pushed off of there. But uh, but this will callus, and this will callus, and they'll fuse. Um, I'll do a much prettier one in the next one. But the other thing is you have to tape it up. Um, so this is grafting tape or parafilm. You just need a little piece, and it stretches, and it sticks to itself. Bah. See, being on film is, like, the worst for doing anything. I don't know how Sean does it. I just do a weird bad job when I do things on camera. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I get it real tight. And when you're pulling it tight, you don't want to, like, move the scion sideways. So when I'm pulling tight, I pull, like, down this way and then around. And so I'm never pulling tight when I'm going sideways. I'm just pulling tight when I'm going in this plane. Um, and it sticks to itself and this stuff uh, photo degrades in the sun so and then I do there's one bud here and one bud here I do one or two buds um, that I leave and it'll grow right through the the tape this bud will just break through it in the spring and then I'll I'll put a little beeswax on the top uh, when I'm done at the end of the day but for now I'm just dropping them in this bucket to keep the roots wet um, Let's do another one real quick and see if I can get a nicer looking cut. So I'm just sliding these two together and you can see how what you get is um, this like Z. There's like a Z here. So you get a lot of cambium contact. And when that um, callus tissue swells, it swells enough that, see even this gap here? It, it would close that gap and these, these parts would fuse together. But when I tape it, it's going to get pushed down. And this will actually be pressed against the bottom there. And, and I'll have a nice a nice uh, wound that heals there. And these are just, they're going to stitch together and they'll live together for the rest of their lives. Um, um, and then basically um, the callusing, you don't want it to happen at too cold of a temperature. Apples are really tough and they can callus at very low temperatures. Um, my basement stays at about 40 degrees and they callus just fine at that temperature. And then when it's spring, I'll be checking on the trees and when the buds are swelling, I know it's time to get them out. I don't want to wait until um, until the buds leaf out, right? Especially in the basement, they'll be all white and weird. Um, you only need it to line up on one side. I didn't really show that, but it's lined up on this side. But this side, it's not. The cyan was too skinny for the rootstock. That's fine. As long as it's lined up on one side, it's plenty of contact. Um, but when these buds are swelling, I want to get them planted. Um, I don't want them to break bud inside. Um, and you don't want to plant them like too early where it's really cold out and like 15 degrees or whatever. But if it drops into the 20s, the apples are fine. And then throughout the season, I'll just have them lined out and I'll, I'll rub off any sprouts that are coming from below the graft union. Um, and I just want to have this tree send all of its energy into this bud. Um, and you can get a tremendous amount of growth because all of these roots are just feeding this one little bud. And it is important to wax the top, I think. This is a very short cutting, so it won't, um, it could dry out easily. And some people might ask why grafts, why not just plant a cutting? It's really hard to root a lot of fruit tree cuttings. So grafting just provides this cutting with, with a nurse. Um, and you could, uh, after you get the tree growing, you could just plant it deep enough that they're cutting roots, but it might take several years to root. Um, and But this is just a nurse to, to keep it going. Um, that's the basics of whip and tongue. It takes a lot of practice, but it's a really nice skill to have. And there's nothing wrong with uh, just taking a bunch of shoots from an old apple tree and just practicing you know, hundreds of times before you actually cut a tree. And once you feel like they're lining up nice, then you can start cutting cutting trees. So this is my book, Trees of Power, where I talk a lot about propagation and how to work with trees, including apples. And uh, there's definitely a section on grafting. Um, 
but I had a lot of fun writing this book, so maybe you'll have a lot of fun reading it. Um, you can check it out online. I think Sean might put a link for it. So thanks a lot. I definitely will. Thanks so much, Akiva. Sure.